Hello, everybody. We're ready to start Chapter 18. Chapter 18 will be about the heart, and this will be the uh, second half of Unit 2. And as with the blood, um, I'm just going to combine the anatomy of the heart and the physiology of the heart together. It's pretty difficult to separate the two, and you will have a single Chapter 18 test, which will include both anatomy and physiology questions together. So just check out your study guide that I have posted for you. It will list all of the anatomical features that you need to be able to identify off of uh, images of the heart. And um, of course, we'll be covering the function as we go through chapter 18 here as well. I'm planning to just blend all of these things together so I will not have a separate heart anatomy module and a separate heart physiology module for this chapter. It's just going to all be blended here together and we'll see how that works out for us. All right, so first we're going to start off by uh, discussing some heart function before we even get into the anatomy to any, uh, any great deal. All right, as you guys know, your heart is a pump, and your heart pumps blood, of course, through two circuits. Uh, one of those circuits is called the pulmonary circuit, and the other one is called the systemic circuit. And so by circuit, what that means is the blood is flowing, um, starts in the heart, flows out to a location, and then it comes back. And there are two different versions of that. The pulmonary circuit, of course, is uh, blood, includes blood that is flowing from the heart to the lungs and then back to the heart. That's your pulmonary circuit. Systemic circuit is, involves blood flow from the heart out to all parts of the body, all other parts of the body, all systems, and then from there back to the heart. <clears throat> all right, so your heart, as it is beating, it is actually sending blood out to uh, the lungs and also out to all of your body systems. And then at the same time, it's also receiving blood back from those locations as well. So your heart is uh, basically functions as two side-by-side -side pumps. And over on the anatomical right side of the heart, so we kind of think about the heart looking like this, it's divided, of course, into a left side and a right side. And so over on the right-hand side, you've got oxygen-poor blood that is coming back from your tissues, coming into that right-hand side of the heart. So that oxygen has been given up to your uh, tissues because they need it for what? Cellular respiration, of course. Um, that blood also has a lot of CO2 in it, carbon dioxide wastes. Where does that CO2 come from? Hopefully you're thinking cellular respiration. Those carbons in the CO2 came from those carbon-based organic nutrients that your cells have been breaking down um, for energy. So CO2 is a waste. We have to get rid of that. So the blood that comes back to the right-hand side of the heart, which is coming back from you know, all the different body systems, all the different parts of the body, needs to get sent out to the lungs. So the right-hand side of the heart is actually going to send that blood out to both of your lungs, um, goes to the lungs, it becomes reoxygenated. Those hemoglobin molecules in your red blood cells pick up oxygen gas molecules. The CO2 goes into the air spaces in the lungs so that you can exhale it out. And then that oxygen oxygenated blood comes back into the left side of the heart, and then the left side of the heart is going to pump it out to all of your body systems. That's called the systemic circuit. Goes out to your tissues, gives up oxygen gas to your cells so they can use it for cellular respiration, picks up CO2 waste, and it comes back over here to the right-hand side of the heart. So you constantly have this going on all the time. All right, here's a nice diagram from your textbook, which is showing that to you. So here's the heart here in the center, and this is the right side I was just talking about, and here's your left side over here. And soon we'll be talking about the different chambers of the heart. You actually have two upper chambers, and each of those is called an atrium. And you've got these two lower chambers down in here. Each of those is called a ventricle. So the systemic circuit, which is blood circulating out to uh, all the various tissues of the body. Um, you'll notice in blue, whenever you see blue designations on anatomy diagrams, that represents oxygen-poor 
CO2 rich blood. So you got that coming back to the right side of the heart. And notice that the right side of the heart then pumps that blood out over here to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood picks up oxygen gas, gives up CO2. So that's why you see the color change there on the blood vessel diagrams. Red indicates oxygen-rich, CO2-poor blood. That flows back in over here to the left side of the heart. Um, and then the left side of the heart is going to send that blood out into the systemic circuit so it can supply all that oxygen gas goodness to your tissues. All right, and also, now we're not really, we're going to focus on blood vessels and what goes on with them more so when we get to uh, Unit 3. That'll be the first part of Unit 3. Um, <clears throat> blood flow, blood flow, starting from the heart. Uh, blood vessels that leave the heart, carry blood away from the heart, are called arteries. And an easy way to remember that is A for away. Blood vessels carrying blood away from the heart are arteries. So these bigger blood vessels that are carrying blood away from the heart are arteries, and then those are going to branch, like you see over here, when they get into specific tissue, specific locations. You start to have lots of smaller arteries. Those are called arterioles. Those are little arteries. And then those lead to, you know, when you're getting down to the level of um, specific tissue locations, very specific places. You have microscopic blood vessels called capillaries. Those are the smallest blood vessels. And that's where your exchanging is going on between the blood and the tissues. You know, fluid, oxygen, gas, nutrients, all that good stuff comes out of the capillaries and gets into the surrounding extracellular fluids of your tissues. And then the capillaries are also picking up the CO2, carbon dioxide waste. Capillaries lead to venules, so those are the small veins. Venules lead to bigger blood vessels called veins. Veins then lead to the heart. So veins m carry blood toward the heart. Arteries are away from the heart. Veins carry blood toward the heart. So get used to thinking about that. Now, uh, you may be thinking, well, it's easy to tell on the diagram because veins are always blue and arteries are always red. That's true for your systemic circuit over here. Yes, arteries that are carrying blood away from the heart toward your tissues are colored red because those arteries contain oxygen-rich, CO2-poor blood. Then you have the gas exchange in your tissues. The blood is traveling back towards the heart through veins, and those veins contain oxygen-poor, CO2-rich blood. So for the systemic circuit, those colors are true. The pulmonary circuit, though, is the opposite. Because remember, your heart is pumping to two locations, um, two different places. The pulmonary circuit, the, vein, the, the veins, the blood vessels that are carrying blood away from the heart and towards the lungs, those are still called arteries. They're called pulmonary arteries. Okay, but notice they're colored blue because the heart is pumping that oxygen-poor CO2-rich blood to the lungs so you can have gas exchange take place in the lungs. So they're arteries, but they're colored blue in the pulmonary circuit. And then in the lungs, the blood picks up oxygen gas, gives up its CO2 waste, starts returning to the heart over here through veins, pulmonary veins. And so they are veins in the pulmonary circuit, but they're colored red because the blood is uh, oxygen rich and CO2 poor. So um, don't think that when you're looking at a diagram, veins are always blue and arteries are always red. Usually they are because you usually are looking at the systemic circuit, but if you're thinking about the pulmonary circuit, those colors are going to be reversed. All right, and shortly we're going to be taking a look at some of the heart anatomy. I'm going to use visible body to demonstrate that too. It's very good for the heart. And um, of course, you guys can use any of those 3D anatomy apps that you would like to take a closer look at the heart. Um, they're all 
generally pretty good. And as I mentioned um, earlier, the heart is divided up into four chambers. So if this is our really crude drawing of the heart, um, it's divided into, of course, a left side and a right side, anatomical left and right. And <clears throat> there's a chamber on the upper right that's called the right atrium, a larger chamber on the lower right side, that's the right ventricle. And then over on the left side, you have an upper chamber called the left atrium. And then a lower chamber on the left side called the left ventricle. Your atria, atria is the plural of atrium, are your receiving chambers. So blood that is flowing back to the heart through veins. always enters into the left atrium or the right atrium. And then your ventricles are really your pumping chambers. Your ventricles send blood out of the heart. So the right ventricle pumps blood. Over here, the right-hand side is gonna pump the blood out into the pulmonary circuit towards the lungs. Your left ventricle pumps blood out to the systemic circuit. So think of your atria as the receiving chambers and your ventricles as the pumping chambers of the heart. All right, then on the next uh, video lecture, we're going to start taking a closer look at some of the heart anatomy. And the first thing we're going to discuss are the different layers of the heart itself, the layers of the heart wall and, um, and its outer coverings and its inner linings. And uh, we'll cover that first, and then we'll start taking a look at some of the heart anatomy on visible body as well.